Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and you're watching Fish for Thought. It's so great to see all of your smiling faces again. Well, I don't actually know if you're smiling. Maybe some of you are really angry and you really want these tips right now. Well, it's coming. That was my angry impression. Now, before we get started, I would just like to make the disclaimer that this is for beginners or people who just started the hobby not too long ago. If you are one of these people, this video is gonna be perfect for you. Now, these five tips are going to help you take fish tanks that look like this. and guide it in a direction so it'll eventually look like this. And trust me guys, when I say this, it's not that hard. If I can do it, anyone can do it, honestly. So tip number one, one of the easiest things to do to improve the look of your fish tank is to use oversized decoration. So oversized hardscapes such as rock and wood and oversized plants. Now when I say oversized, it might look oversized to us, but it's actually not. In nature, if you take a photo, nothing is perfectly cropped into the photo. There's always something cut off. And what we're doing with fish tanks is taking a slice of nature and putting it in our house. That means not everything needs to be perfectly sized down. And especially if they are sized down, and fits properly, it kind of seems artificial. So what we want is to try to look for things that might seem too big at first. But when we put it in the tank, trust me, it's going to have a very positive aesthetic effect. And when you put your fish in there, they are going to interact with that large decoration by swimming around it, interacting within it, and you're going to be watching your fish tank for hours. This is a very simple trick, but it is effective. Tip number two is kind of like an industry secret. It is also a very, very simple thing to do, but not many people, especially beginners, know to utilize this. And quite simply, it is doing a species-only tank. This might seem like common sense or something that's just, you know, it's, it's a no-brainer. But if you have friends who have fish tanks or you see them online, chances are you're looking at a whole bunch of different species, two of each kind, something like that, all mashed into one tank. If you invite your friends over to see this new fish tank that you made that is species only, they're going to look at it and it's going to hit different. They're going to wonder, what did you do to make it look like... I don't know, something is different. What did you do? How much money did you spend to make that fish tank look like that? And how come mine doesn't look like that? Well, it's because you don't need to make your fish tank into Noah's Ark, two giraffes, two hippos, two, two rhinos to make it look good. In fact, it will look worse. What you want to do is pick one species and one species only. Say for a 20 gallon tank, you want one species and you want 20 of it. We're talking about Neon Tetras, Cardinal Tetras, Harlequin or Espe Rasporas, Rubby Nose, Ember Tetras, some schooling fish or shoaling fish that will fit in a 20 gallon with a large school. What this does is to help them behave in a very natural schooling, shoaling way. And this behavior is going to make your fish tank look beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. And this is the secret that most experts do to showcase their fish tank. It is not often talked about and not often given as a tip to beginners to make their fish tank look better, but here it is. Try it out for yourself, species only tank. You are not going to be disappointed. The third tip, lighting. Gone are the days with the fluorescent tubing lights that you had to replace every three months that were just very power hungry and not efficient at all in output. And the lids cost around like $300, $500. I also don't recommend that you stick with the light that came with the hood of a set, a fish tank set that you might have gotten. Chances are that lid is not going to be nearly enough to grow your live plants and will grow algae instead. What I recommend and what I use myself to grow these lush, beautiful, low tech tanks is the Nycru line of lighting. I am not sponsored, I just love using them. I have an affiliate link in the description below, but you don't have to use it. You can go on Amazon and search Nycru, N-I-C-R-E-W. Now you guys might be saying, okay, but I can't afford that. That's gonna cost a fortune. This company makes their lighting very affordable. This is actually going to be one of your cheapest investments in starting a fish tank. When before, lighting could have been the most expensive investment you can make when you're buying a fish tank or setting it up. Like I said, it could cost upwards of 
hundreds of dollars. But now you don't even have to leave the comfort of your own home and this thing comes to your front door in about two days. Anyway, we are moving right along to tip number four substrate the natural thing that we have to be concerned about after we take care of the lighting now i'm not going to push any fancy products to you a big part of substrate is the price and a lot of people flinch at how much they are willing to pay for some dirt so people on a budget rejoice i have the perfect tip commonly known as the dirted tank whatever you want to put in the tank as your substrate so maybe just lightly colored gravel or natural colored gravel that have no nutrients. I hope that is in your budget, just some common normal gravel. Before putting that in when you're setting up your new fish tank, head on over to your home and garden center and get some dirt cheap organic potting mix. I got a huge bag that's gonna last me a lifetime for $8 Canadian. That is budget right there. You're only gonna use a tiny bit of it. So I don't know, you can give the rest to your mom or your parents for their gardening stuff, or you can use it yourself for gardening, or save it for your next fish tank. Either way, this is gonna save your wallet many tiers. What you want to do is sprinkle a light layer of that organic potting mix on the bottom before you put anything into the tank. And then you're going to cap it with whatever substrate you were going to put in there anyways. Now you have a fertilized substrate and it's going to grow your plants like magic. Coupled with that super cheap nitrolite, your plants are going to love it. Those java ferns and those anubias plants, they're no longer going to suffer. They're no longer going to go yellow and not grow at all. You're not going to have to replace your java ferns every two months. They were never meant to be replaced in the first place. And now you know how to keep them growing. And the fifth and last tip, the best for last, this might be arguably the most important tip on this list. However, this is also a very simple tip and it's called over budgeting. This is that single most important tip that I always say, budget at least three hundred dollars for your first 10 gallon fish tank and a lot of my viewers respond three hundred dollars i can set up a fish tank for one hundred dollars i can set the fish tank up for twenty dollars i can set up a beautiful evil gumi skate for two dollars i don't know where they're living in the world i don't know what their situation is but two dollars really anyway back on topic the mindset to over budget is a very important mindset especially if you're starting out and don't have too many resources lying around. You don't have a spare filter somewhere. You don't have a spare heater or some wood or some rocks that you can use to scape your new tank with. You're starting out blank. You're starting out completely new. You're going to have to invest upfront. Under budgeting or even budgeting normally is going to undercut a lot of things and create some issues. For example, if you're planning a planted tank and you want to get some fluval stratum substrate or something premium like that, that'll grow your plants better. You have a 20 gallon tank and you're wondering if one bag of fluval stratum is enough or maybe you should get two. If you didn't over budget, you're going to go for the one bag and yeah, that might cover your whole ground, but it might not create a layer that's thick enough for you to actually plant in. And after realizing this, you might be like, well, if I can't afford both of them, it won't work. So I'll just not buy it and go for plastic plants instead. And that is one of the worst things that I can hear. It breaks my heart. I'll go for plastic plants instead. No, don't say that. Another issue, if you don't over budget, you might see some oco stones that you really want. You might see some manzanita wood, but they're out of your budget and you don't, all of a sudden you don't, you can't afford it anymore. Now, of course, I'm talking to the people who actually have more budget to spare so that you can over budget. If you're a younger viewer, if you don't even really have a budget to begin with, this doesn't apply to you. But when you grow up and you can afford whatever the heck you want to buy yourself, when you become an adult, you're going to feel real good when you over budget and get whatever you want to make your tank look as fantastic as it can. This over budgeting mindset goes hand in hand with the other mindset where every tank that you set up have the mindset to perfect it. You might think that perfecting it is going to cost so many more resources than just, you know, under budgeting it a little and making it look semi-decent. But the truth of the matter is, if you just try to go and get by with whatever resources you have with that one tank, this leads to a lot of multiple tank syndrome where you think to yourself, okay, this tank, I, I went under budget and I didn't really do such a good job. I'm looking forward to the next tank that I'm going to escape. And this actually helps you spend more money and doesn't help you save at all because now you're already thinking of the next tank that you want to perfect. But when you get to that and you didn't over budget, you're going to under budget it again. And again, it's not going to be the perfect tank you're looking for. And you're going to have even more fish tanks. So in the long run, it might help to just have a mindset of, I want one tank and I want it perfected. That way it will at least slow down 
your multiple tank syndrome. I really hope that this video sparked some kind of idea or inspired you in some way or at least put a smile on your face. If you want more tips and tricks in this hobby, I do have a playlist, One Minute Fish Tank Masterclass for you guys to check out somewhere on this channel. I also have other videos that are some entertaining videos and some are more educational. So please go ahead and check out all this free content. And if you like this video, please give it a like. And if you enjoyed this video, really loved it, then please subscribe to my channel. There'll be more videos to come and don't forget to get your hands wet.